about a beginner's approach to um, writing their own licks and stuff. And when I say beginner, I mean someone who's new to writing licks and, and solos and stuff, not a beginner beginner. And I'm going to be talking about the modes quite a bit, so if you don't know what the modes are, watch the video that I did on the modes first and then come back and watch this one. Um, so basically I'm going to show you a, a lick that I wrote uh, years and years ago. It was one of the first sort of licks that I remember writing and, uh, and what my approach was at the time and stuff. And, and I don't reckon it's a very good lick, I wouldn't really use it in a song, but uh, you know, it's definitely useful and it's just, you know, I'll show you exactly how I play it and stuff, so it's a free lick as well. Right, so when I wrote this lick, um, I wasn't thinking about it in this much detail, so I wanted to just figure out how to get from a low A on the low E to a high A on the high E string in a quick amount of time as possible. I wasn't thinking it in this much detail, but I think now looking back and what I know from guitar and what guitar is like, is I think our ears are attracted to wide intervallic leaps in the shortest time, amount of time as possible. So that's why everyone thinks uh, sweet picking or string skipping sounds really impressive because you're going from a low note to a high note in you know in the space of a second, and that maybe sounds impressive. So basically, the approach I had at the time was sort of just joining together parts of the modes and just these little boxes of shapes and pants that were really easy and went together and just apply it to write my own lick. So basically if you learn all the modes, like I say, watch that video first and sort of get into them, learn the three note per string modes, sort of figure out every sort of note on the fretboard that's in that scale. And basically I grouped together two strings, the A and the E, the D and the G and the B and the E string and found shapes that had identical patterns, so exactly the same uh, frets on each group of two strings. So we're starting off with the frets 5, 7, 8, 7, 8, 10. Which is triplets, exactly the same thing on the A string. So that's how the lick starts and the pattern sort of changes. Um, instead of doubling up, then we just start doing just faster runs. And the purpose of that is to give it sort of like a revving up kind of sound to it. So next up is which is 7, 9, 10. Move up to the 9, 9, 10, 12. And you've got 10, 12, 14. And you've got 12, 13, 15. And you slide up to the 17th fret on the high E, and that's your last note. So slowly, uh, this is all triplets, all alternate picked. And if you can pick, at least starting off with palm muting, it gives it, like I say, a sort of revving up sound and then sort of loosen up your picking as you go on. So I'll break it down and play it even slower than I did all the way through. to this when writing it was just trying to figure out how to get from a low note to a high note in a really short space of time. But um, writing your own licks, if you are going to write your own solos, I really, really, really can't stress enough that you should really be learning your scales first um, and don't rely on your ears straight away. Now and then obviously you want to try stuff that's a bit, bit different, a bit outside the box and stuff. Like I said in the modes video, not everyone has a very high developed um, ear and, and ear for music. You know, that can come with time or some people just don't naturally have it and learning the scales uh, is really important I think if you want to you know start writing your own stuff. A really easy approach is to sort of take out bits of scales that you've learned and sort of see how they all fit together so think about all the modes is uh, this this one will be in uh, A Aeolian which is the minor scale. The next scale up from that is B Locrian back at uh, the major scale which is C. Basically I just knew all my modes and just kind of took bits from each different scale and applied it, chopped, chopped bits out, moved up a few frets to go to the next string and stuff until I got back to A. So you do have to really think um, to begin with musically and stuff. The more you play the less you really have to rely on theory. Sometimes you are relying just on patterns, sometimes you're relying on your ear to sort of tell you what to do. But um, it's a very sort of good starting point is to learn your modes, learn them in every position and learn how they all connect and then cut bits out of each sort of position and sort of figure out cool ways of sticking them together 
and, and then once you've done that you can think about different ways of you know ascending and descending so like ascending in groups of four or something like that so so yeah just try and learn the lick um, learn all your scales and stuff and then uh, see what you can come up with